Hi everyone, TJ from TJOmega.org here. We're too, we're, uh, all right, blew my intro. <laughs> it's too early for this. We're at Metricon 2016. I'm sitting here with the one and only Richard Ian Cox. Thank you very much for joining me this morning. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. Okay, now before we get into the voice acting, I want to kind of start with a little bit of the early stuff. Sure. So, tell me, take me into the head of a 16-year-old boy with his own TV show. <laughs> um... Yeah, it was it was pretty great to be honest with you. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Um, um, yeah, so it was uh, the Adventures of the Black Stallion booked um, this great show starring next to Mickey Rooney and shot three years in Canada and France and in New Zealand. So it's sort of a jet setty kind of <laughs> full time leading gig, which was uh, which was great. You know, I mean, you'd think it would help you socially in high school, but I really wasn't there then <laughs> at that point for high school. Um, and when I went back, it was all <clears throat> exams and whatnot. Um, so, uh, so it was fun, it was great, and it was wonderful, uh, but it was also sort of pre-internet, pre-social media, pre... So you sort of, there was a, a fairly, you know, large disconnect between, you know, what could have felt like the glamour of shooting a show uh, <clears throat> and the sort of, the social fan aspect of it, which is really the only place the glamour exists. Right. And then contrasted it against, you know, working 12 to 14 to 16 hour days every day, which is not the glamorous part of it, right? No. That's the hardworking part of it. So, so you know, it was, there was a duality to it. It was exciting and it was wonderful and it was also an awful lot of work and it was the beginnings of a career and it was <clears throat> learning how to be, you know, kind of professional. So there was some sort of, um, uh, relenting on your childhood at one stage but at the same time you you know you were following something cool so so it was yeah it was great it was good mm -hmm. so transitioning from three years at this show mm -hmm. starting your own show and then how does the transition to a voice actor happen um well you know we did that show until 92 93 i booked my first voice gig which was on a show called bots master i remember bots um, master yeah so i did a couple of voices on that and that was the first thing i'd ever done so uh, but it was a good place to learn because it was around a lot of really good voice people um in vancouver mm -hmm. um and um <clears throat> so that was sort of the beginnings of that i didn't do a ton of it um other than that first season mm -hmm. and then uh, and then a couple other you know sort of gigs here and there still doing lots of on-camera stuff 96, we were doing a show called Breaker High with Ryan Gosling and all those fabulous people, and um, which was a blast. And I auditioned for this show, Ronma, that came up because they were looking for a replacement. And it was like anything else, you know, go in and audition and try to be good. And, you know, um, I was pretty good with the looping uh, aspect of it, the ADR aspect of dubbing, because, uh, you know, doing on camera stuff. You have to dub your own voices, particularly right. when you do a show with a horse. So it's always foot <laughs> steps all over all your lines, right? right. So you have to go in and redub them. So uh, I think you know maybe that helped me and my voice. You know, obviously was young enough sounding, and you know, um, so that's that's the beginning of the Ranma and the anime side of things. And then doing so many of those, you know, you kind of get your feet under you, and then and then you're off to the races. And then Inuyasha happened after that, and mm -hmm. then so on and so forth. Speaking of Ramba, um, <coughs> taking over for another actor, mm -hmm. in, what's the challenge for that? Are you trying to match what he did or trying to match the persona he was going for? Uh, what was it she? It was Sarah Strange uh, for that particular role. But yeah, I mean, it's um, in a sense. But I mean, then there's the question of are you voice matching? And if you're voice matching, obviously you're trying to make it sound like that person is still there or that there's not this huge jarring separation at the very least between them. Um, and I think that it's, it, it would have been difficult for me to try to voice match Sarah because, you know, she had this awesome guy voice going for Ranma, but, you know, our voices aren't identical. And so right. really it was just about finding the spirit of the character and, and finding sort of, you know, his personality and kind of going from there. And trusting in your producer, Toshi Fumi Yoshida was the, was the um, American English voice producer of the show and you know you have to just sort of trust your producer and, and you know the, the people on the show that that they like what you're doing and that you're doing the right thing so obviously it was different for people and it was odd for people uh, and there was a lot of talk about you know that they didn't like it and you know the fans were upset about it but at the same time 
you know, I, no one ever said anything to me. Yeah. You know, and it was like the early days, I guess, of social media and all that kind of stuff. Well, actually, it's pre-social media. The internet was there. <clears throat> but, like, I don't know. Maybe I just have the face that people don't approach. <laughs> <laughs> Say mean things, too. Well, I don't know. But. I've heard that a lot, though. Anytime they have to change a voice of for course. any reason. Yeah, everyone's going to be upset for a little while. Yeah. Yeah, but you sort of have to transition. And it is jarring, and it is weird. And you and you do love something, and you're like, well, oh, I don't think I like that and that's odd to me but yeah I think you got to give it a chance because everybody's sort of in the same boat right the producers don't want to change they're not like haha they're like twirling a mustache and driving right. someone to a railroad track somewhere <laughs> I'm gonna make the fans angry like no one's doing that they're like you know they obviously the actor needs to leave for whatever reason either mm -hmm. they can't do it anymore you know geographically they've moved they've moved on in their life there's some sort of change in their life and they don't want to go back and do something or they can't so the producers end in a position where they've got to replace them, you know? I mean, I'm sure there are some instances where people are like, ha ha ha, no, I'm, you know, I'm gonna do my own thing, and then it's, they kind of wreck something. But in that case, you just kind of have to go with it. Like, right. There's nothing you can do. Mm -hmm. So mentioning Inuyasha before, mm -hmm. that's a show where you do, you do a few seasons, 100 some episodes, and then it just stops. Mm -hmm. I don't know where. Five-ish years later, you come back mm -hmm. to redo Inuyasha. Um, what's it like to bring back a character, like to step back into that role? Um, for him, you know, we'd done so many of them already. I think we'd already done 168 episodes. Mm -hmm. So then when we came back to do Final Act, it was like 26, and, you know, so it wasn't, you know, this huge, you know, number of episodes. Right. <clears throat> um, but we have voice references, and, you know, sort of you listen back, and, oh yeah, that's what I did. And it's not so far off my natural voice. Um, so... It, it wasn't difficult, you know, uh, physically to get back into it. Um, and mentally, I love the guy anyways, and you spend all this time going to conventions and talking to people, and so it's, it's kind of, he's sort of ever-present, right? Like, he's yeah. always there. Now, does that change your perception, the five years in between, where you get to go to fan panels and see the reaction care the people have had to him? Or? Um, no, I mean, because it's like the script is the script, the story is the story, you know, like, um, you certainly want to do a great job for everybody. You know, like yeah. in particular, you know, people have been asking this weekend, you know, what's your favorite part of the final act? And, you know, the whole thing where he sort of, um, he, he, he gets, he, he sort of matures and his relationship with, um, you know, uh, Kagome matures, but also he's now he's got to sort of say goodbye to Kikyo and there's got to be an end to that kind of thing. And, and I think that, um, <clears throat> that that, you know, you do that and you sort of, you know, you know how much it means to everybody. And so you sort of, you make, you want to make sure that it's, it's kind of perfect, right? So, right. you know, I think we did a nice job with it. I think I it think sort of it stands up, yeah. I'm at, I was always happy with it. <laughs> okay, so I have a large number of Transformer fans watching right now. Okay. I Hello. think they will hunt me with knives and pitchforks. And, wow. Yeah, no, they get a little intense. <laughs> uh, sure, if I don't ask about right. doing scatter shots. So, scatter shots. Tell me about a Canadian doing an alien robot with a southern accent. Right. Um, <laughs> it's one of my favorite accents to mess around with anyways. I kind of do, uh, it's, I kind of do a lot, uh, you know, a fair number of accents. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but that one I always like doing, and so just for fun. Um, but I, I, it was the first time I think I had done a character that wasn't an incidental character, that wasn't something that we just sort of threw in, oh, you got, there's like one guy saying, hey, how are you? Can you do him? And then you sort of give him whatever accent you want. Um, but, uh, but I loved it. I, you know, I, I thought it was, a great little show. It would have been awesome to do more, um, but yeah, I know. I just I, I think scatter shots awesome. I, you know, every time someone brings up a toy or whatever, I'm like, that's, that's cool. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> I just keep waiting to have Michael Bay call and ask me. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing a whole movie centered around scatter shot. Oh man. Well, you know, <laughs> scatter shot's a tank with a bunch of missiles. You think it'd be like well, you right think up it'd be all out. over? Like, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Maybe if they do like a Transformers more in the south. Maybe. Which they should do, let's be honest, right? They should. Mm -hmm. Should. <laughs> okay. You know, they, they couldn't do worse. No, they like get about 15 feet, the Decepticons, they get about 15 feet into it, and then everyone <laughs> brings out their gun. Pretty much. Go. Maybe we'll leave. And then they take <laughs> so from Transformers uh -huh. to My Little Pony. Yep. And all these other animes that have been so big on the conventions. <clears throat> uh, just... For you personally, what is it like to be part of such like long-running franchises? Um, oh, it's awesome, you know, like work is great, 
but it's also nice to be part of something that um, that has legs and that means something to people. You know, mm-hmm. that's the thing with My Little Pony is that it's you know, it's a it's a large phenomenon. I think it was a somewhat unexpected phenomenon in oh, terms of the brony aspect easily, to it. Yeah, but I think that that's what makes it great. I think that. Um, I love it when anything comes out of anything where it's not the place that you expect it. Like right. the uh, the five hundred one, you know, like the five hundred first, you know, thing is like. I don't know that when I grew up, anyone expected a bunch of people to willingly want to dress up as stormtroopers. Yeah. And then do good works and all that kind of stuff, right? So, um, it's nice to see it. It's cool to see it. It's awesome. It's like the coolest thing going when something unexpected comes out of something. So for My Little Pony. Uh, that's been a really cool aspect of it. I like the idea that people have sort of caught on to the friendship aspect mm-hmm. of it. I like that it's meant so much to people. I love hearing stories when anyone says that you know some show that we did got them through a rough time because ideally that's what entertainment is. Right. Uh, people take it too seriously and they get really upset about things. I understand that you know by this by the same token, if it means a lot to you and it's taken you through some you know rough times, that it's going to mean a lot. But at the same time. It's supposed to make you feel good or make you feel something if right. you're watching a sad movie or whatever it is. So um, doing anything that has any kind of impact is is huge, and, and you know uh, I'm very proud of all of those. And I and I hope that you know a lot of the other shows that we do will have the same kind of longevity. Yeah, yeah. I always hope you're in that the next Transformers, the next. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Or the next thing that means something to somebody. Like the right. next thing is like, oh my gosh, it's my childhood. You know, mm-hmm. like, which is cool. Now, typically here at MetroCon, there's another Canadian voice actor I usually talk with, and mm-hmm. he doesn't answer questions about favorites, but when someone asks him who his favorite person to work with, it's you. <laughs> That's very kind. I'm genuinely, <laughs> I'm genuinely curious what it's like to be in the, in the booth with Richard Ian Cox. Like, uh, I don't know. I've never been in the booth with him. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, um, <clears throat> I think that... Um, oh, we were talking, Kirby and I were talking about this last night, and we talk about it all the time, is that one of the best things about being a voice actor in Vancouver is how tight the community is. Mm-hmm. And it's not like the on-camera world, and it's not like you know, other elements you know, where actors are together, where they're still supportive and they still like each other, but there's this competition, right? So right. you go to an audition for a film, and it's you, and it's like five other guys you see all the time, and you're like, one of these guys might get it or I might get it and there's a lot of competition so it's like people taking food out of your mouth kind of thing and and whereas voice is like there's a lot more characters you know like mm-hmm. you might be going in you're auditioning for five different characters or whatever but everybody's great and everybody's cool and everybody's really nice and we all like each other and it's going to a studio and recording with your friends which is kind of the best thing in the world so it's, that's why we when everybody asks about animes or prelay or whatever mm-hmm. it is People always say, well, I love doing prelay, and it's, you know, I, I would suggest that the main reason that everybody says that they love doing prelay, at least where we are, is that we always record as a cast. So you get to go to work with your friends and hang out with your friends and be funny and silly and make funny jokes and, you know, fart noises. <laughs> probably what Scott's talking about. Uh, yeah, um, I like to make fart noises on the slates and stuff. So when they're saying this is show, blah, 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 to take line one and forward take, I'm always going. <laughs> and then, you know, you try to get off the slate or silly stuff like that. So yeah. I love working with all of my friends um, and they're good people. And, you know, so yeah, whenever, if you were to ask me who my favorite people to work with, I have to say everybody because everybody's just, you know, funny and awesome and you get to watch really great people doing their thing and that's the other thing about it is that yes it's competitive but if you go in and you're like and you and you audition and you find out oh I didn't get it Damn, who, who got it and then they say oh Scott got it. Or, you know Kirby yeah. got it or, eh, all right well then that, they're good right they're good like and so that's like I was saying last night again Jerry Seinfeld has said that uh, comedy stand-up comedy is the closest thing to justice that there is right mm-hmm. And I would argue, and I would say, I would agree with that. And I would argue that, you know, things like voice are probably a close second because you can either do it or you can't. And the looks and the, all that other kind of stuff are great, mm-hmm. but it doesn't make any difference when you're just on a microphone. <clears throat> Maybe if you're a big celebrity or whatever, and you're coming in to do that big movie, and they're going to sell that big movie with, you know, whoever in such and such a thing. That has a, you know, that makes a difference. But when you're just doing the voices, that's the, 
you know, that's the, that's the thing about it. So you can't get angry, you know, if someone books it, because they're right. just so good. <laughs> so watching someone like Scott or watching someone like Kirby or, you know, whoever in a booth, it's great. It's fun to watch because they're just so awesome. Mm. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for mm. sitting down with me. This is my pleasure. A great experience. Thank you. Excellent. Nice very to meet you. Nice meeting you. And thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned. I've got a lot more from Metricon 2016 coming up in however long it takes me to film, to record all this. 20 um, minutes. 20 minutes. <laughs> all right. See you guys next time.